the Podcasting Dead is available on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Make sure to subscribe for more podcasts. And while you're at it, drop us a like. If you want to help support the channel and have access to extra content, secret contest, and more, make sure to search for us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash The Podcasting Dead. Let's get weird on a Wednesday. I'm Justin. Yeah, I'm JP. And today we're discuss- discussing the, I guess, cousin of the Bermuda Triangle. Sort of, yeah. It's a cousin to the north, man. You know, it. it's always kind of perplexed me how some people just seem to vanish into thin air. And uh, that's something we're going to be getting into today. Well, let's hear it, man. So this takes place, you said, where? This is basically the uh, Alaskan Triangle. It is like you said, it's kind of the equivalent of the Bermuda Triangle. It's uh, and and to any uh, native people who may be listening, I apologize if I butcher the name of a tribe or a place or something. But uh, I I can't generally read that well in English, so stuff like this really gets me. But anyway, as you said, everybody knows about the Bermuda Triangle. But you might not know about the Alaskan Triangle. Now, uh, here's some stats for you. you now, ready? real quick, let's right, cite our right. sources. Where are you getting this information from? Uh, this comes from Insider.com. Insider.com. There you go. Yeah, one of my sources anyway. Where I'm, where I'm drawing this from. But yeah, the uh, the the Alaskan coastline, dude, is is pretty darn long. We're talking about th- thirty three thousand miles Holy of uh, crap. wilderness along the uh, the the coast there. And on average, five of every 1,000 people go missing in Alaska, according to the L.A. Times. So even if there's nothing supernatural going on, I mean, obviously, it's just super easy to get lost because there's so much wilderness up in Alaska. Right. And the uh, now just uh, bear with me, Tlingit tribe that lives in Juneau. I'm sure I butchered that name. I'm sorry. Uh, They have their own explanation for the high amount of missing people. They're saying that they're evil spirits. Called the Kushtaka. The, the okay. Kushtaka. Uh, again, I probably butchered that, but Kushtaka. Uh, they're shapeshifters, according to this tribe. Half man, and uh, if you were going to guess what other animal from Alaska they would be half man and half what with. I mean, if it's supposed to be scary and intimidating, you would imagine like half man, half polar bear. <laughs> Something like <laughs> half that. Half man, right? half wolf. Yeah, well, this is half man, half otter. What? Like, Otters are so cute. And- yeah, they just swim around the river and chill. But yeah, the, these evil shapeshifters are half man, half otter. They lure women and children to water with fake cries in order to steal their soul and then drown them. So half man, half otter. So is it like top half otter, bottom half man, or, or bottom half otter, top half man? I don't know, man. I guess they would have to have the, the signature otter tail, right? I would imagine. Um, that's that's Well, it makes perfect sense, though, all right? Because if it was like half man, half polar bear, that wouldn't be very enticing. No. You'd be like, well, what the hell is this? And you'd be out. Half man, half wolf. We've heard the stories of the wolf man and, and, and uh, uh, werewolves, so you'd be out of there. But uh, otters are freaking adorable they hold hands when they sleep and they're cute and they do all kinds of cutesy things so if any animal was going to lure you in it, it makes sense that it would be an otter versus you know some scary beast yeah they you know give you some cute uh, big eyed blinks and uh, wiggle their whiskers a little bit next thing you know they're pounding you to death with that big old tail and, and drowning you and sucking your soul that's out. such a scary way to go there's so much folklore out there about these entities and that's their method of killing is they lure you to a body of water and then they drown you like sirens isn't that what sirens supposedly do is they yeah, lure yeah. you in with a beautiful song and then they drown you and uh, there's uh, I've heard rumors of a, of a swamp man in Louisiana and I think they have a different name for him than swamp man but his deal is he lures you to the swamp and then he drowns you so i'm gonna tell you man of all my fears in the way to go drowning is probably my number one most feared way to die so that makes these uh, entities even scarier for me oh man and this this is wild actually was able to pull up a map uh, looking at the uh, alaskan triangle and dude it it stretches a good amount it goes through like four of their uh, their territories it starts it, it like goes from juno to anchorage up to Barrow and then uh back down to Juno. It's it wow it, it goes through uh through quite a bit of uh, of Alaska, man. This is wild. And do a lot of people go missing in that triangle? Oh yeah, this is where they had the highest concentrations of uh, missing people. 
Mm. And now, while of course some of that could be attributed to like the terrain, like you would say, in the terrain and the, just the perils of being in Alaska, it is interesting that a lot of these happen in that certain area. Yeah, man, it goes from the southeastern wilderness and fjords to the interior tundra and up to the Arctic mountain ranges. So huh. that's uh, that covers a lot of territory, man. And what are these entities called again? They are called the. Because if you said it wrong, you sounded legit. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> right. if you pronounced it wrong, at least that you you made that wrong pronunciation yours because it sounded like a legit name for something. They are the Kushtaka. The Kushtaka. The Kushtaka. It almost sounds like a, a Klingon entity. I, I was going to say but... it sounds like a special at Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't. Or or, or some really good, <laughs> some really good green. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got that like Kushtaka? Good, kush, yeah, Kushtaka. Flying high on that good old Kushtaka. Yeah. I don't know, man. So what do you think? I mean, I, of course, the rational side of, of me wants to say that yeah, obviously people probably just perish uh, hiking or, or exploring and they, they fall down caverns or they get stuck in the wilderness or lost. But uh, what do you think? Well, man, I mean, it could be uh, it could be just some psychos living like in that part of the forest that they kill people. I, I don't know how hospitable that land would be for an actual settlement of some kind, though. But I'm sure some people make it their home. Yeah. 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 It says uh, in 2007, Alaska State Troopers added 2,833 missing person notices to their missing persons clearing. Holy crap. And uh, blah, blah, blah. In a state with just over 670,000 uh, residents, that figure averages out to, like we said, about four in every 1,000 people that go missing. Huh. And, uh, and they go missing in this area. For the most part, yeah. I, I'd, I'd love to. It's one of those things I'd love to research that further, but I just honestly don't know that I care to trek the the. I love, you know, I love to hike and I love to trek the wilderness, but the Alaskan wilderness is just not something that I'd, I'm, I'm that excited to, to run up and uh, check out. Yeah, especially. Not without the, a guide. Uh, I mean, without a guide. With the Kushtaka, man. Especially with the Kushtaka. Yeah, uh, so they, 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 they what? They feign cries of distress, and that's what... Yeah, they lure you in there thinking it's, it's almost like, I guess, like black-eyed children. You know, you you think it's a, a child or something in need. Next thing you know, you're you're trying to help, and then they, they're they holding you underwater. Cute little whiskers, and that's it for you. Skinwalkers will do that uh, reportedly as well. They'll... they'll f- Fain cries of help. Sometimes it's really eerie because they it's it's it, people say that the cries that you hear for help are actually the last cries of their their latest victim. Mm-hmm. So when you hear like a woman in the woods screaming for help, that's was what the skinwalker heard as it was killing someone. Right. Those beings are assholes. I've always said like in the apocalypse, like like the Walking Dead apocalypse or any apocalypse story where someone feigns distress in order to take advantage of someone. You are the lowest of the low Mm -hmm. because you're taking advantage of someone's kindness. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing to run up in somebody's house and steal their shit. It's one thing to hold them at gunpoint or whatever. But you're taking someone who is selfless and going out of their way to help someone and you're taking and and punishing them for that kindness, in this case, by taking their life. So the Kushtaka, with all due respect, are a bunch of assholes. Yeah, it's crazy. Like you say, this kind of matches a lot of different reports all throughout the world, whether you're talking about skinwalkers or whatever. Do you think that lends credence to the fact that this actually is a real phenomenon or you think that it's almost just like a, what do you call it, like a, a collective mass hysteria kind of thing? Well, I think that here on the podcast, we both try to have open minds to stuff like this. We're not very big b- believers per se in the supernatural, but we definitely try to have an open mind to it. And I don't rule it out because I don't know everything that goes on in this plane of existence. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, I'm kind of like you. It's one of those things where I kind of need to see to believe. But I don't know, man. It almost makes you wonder if... Skinwalkers, Wendigos, and I know Wendigos have a little bit more of a backstory that has to do with cannibalism and things like that. But sometimes a lot of the stories of Wendigos and Skinwalkers kind of are one and the same. Uh, there's reports from both entities being able to mimic voices, to to feign distress, to shape shift, things like that. And it almost seems like one of those entities that's worldwide, but just has different names in different places. So if there's a Skinwalker in 
Alaska, I mean, it, it, it could be that it just takes the form of an otter because it's a common animal in the area. Because a lot of times skinwalkers will be reported to take the shape of a deer. And we all know, especially here in the South, that you don't really freak out when you see a deer in the woods. You know, you would freak out if you saw a bear or a mountain lion. But you, you see a deer and you you don't feel any threat. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times skinwalkers tend to take the shape of something. And, and there are reports of skinwalkers being uh, shaped as coyotes and things like that. But a lot of times you see that they t- tend to take the shape of something that is considered to be relatively harmless and then they will feign human distress in order to draw you in and do whatever they want to to you so uh it almost sounds like this could be a case of just a skinwalker in or skinwalkers in alaska just given a different name by the locals i do sincerely think that ancient uh, ancient peoples in places like uh sodom gomorrah things like this i do think they dabbled in a like genetic manipulation, making hybrids of different animals, human animal hybrids. I think it's technology that was uh, widely lost to us. I'm not saying, I mean, it does still go on. The Chinese have been experimenting with like, well, Russians, and pig too, embryos. Yeah. yeah, the Russians as well. Didn't mean to interrupt you there. No, no, no. Like, the the Russians, right. the Russians experimented yeah. with making like human gorilla mm-hmm. cross breeded super soldiers at one point. Can you imagine you just enlisted in the uh, the Soviet army? Next thing you know, they're saying, "All right, well, your orders are uh, go have sex with this uh, silverback gorilla." <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's how they were doing it. I'm pretty sure it was like in a lab with tubes and shit. No, well, that's no way to make a make a monkey man. It's got to be romantic. You know? <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to argue you there because uh, um, uh, uh, making uh, it's never been something I've pondered. So I don't really know how the process should go, but I imagine it'd be more like test tubes and syringes and things than, you know, someone actually making love and committing bestiality with you know, a monkey. I don't I don't want to get too off track gorilla. here, but we, I was at the comic shop the other day, and you, you've seen the, there's this comic called Unnatural. It's got like a, the pig chick on the on the cover, and like the werewolf guys like like groping her from behind and stuff. And just the the I, I brought it up. I was like, if you had to have sex with a, a human animal hybrid, what animal would uh, would you pick to to you know be half a person and, and make love to them? I mean, are we saying they? I mean, again, it goes back to my original question about the otter: top half what, bottom half what? You know, well, I, mean, I don't want to make the, I don't want to make love to the bottom half of, of anything that's not human. Think think less like a minotaur, and think more just like a like you, but you you're a cat, so you're like covered in fur. You've got the cat ears, like <laughs> you're, you're, you're getting a into human some furry stuff, you're, man. You're looking... I'm not into the furries, brother. <laughs> I'm but, not here to judge or kink shame, but I'm not into the furry scene. Gun to your head if, like, uh, say your girlfriend, God forbid, was in some kind of, like, cosmic accident, and the only way they could save her life was to <laughs> splice her DNA with a certain animal. Like, what animal would you pick, you know? I, I, don't, I, I don't know. Uh, do, can I have some options here? This is, again, something new to me I haven't thought much about, so I don't really have much on deck for this. Well, you know, you could go with a, a classic house pet, like a... A, a dog or a cat you no. could go with something more exotic maybe like a panda bear <laughs> um maybe a kangaroo you know imagine her bouncing around the house with your little daughter in a, in a kangaroo mm. pouch that'd be kind of cool you know i don't have an answer for this right now but i'll think about it and i'll have one by the end of the podcast before we get back into the to the to the subject at hand um well the subject we were talking about mm-hmm. what is your choice for the subject at hand oh for me oh man well i've you know i've i've fantasized about Many creatures that uh, crawl uh, crawl upon the earth, swim in the sea, swing from the trees, and I think I would choose the uh, the lemur from a uh, Zabumafu. I don't even okay. Yeah, I mean he was Talking about the the, the ring tailed lemur with the, like the big eyes and yeah, he would be jumping around and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Why is it a he in this scenario? I thought it was you. <laughs> so your I thought your girlfriend was being. Oh well, well we could splice her with some uh, lemur DNA. You know, that'd be all right. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. It'd be pretty cool, man. Anyways, away from the bestiality and back to the human animal the hybrids, the skinwalkers here. You know, I, to me, this sounds uh, like it's in line with skinwalker sightings uh, or yeah, stories. What do, you, what do you think? No, it, it absolutely does. And I think that's what uh, what it has to do with. And I also think, like I said, I think these are kind of uh, 
uh, descendants of creatures that were that were made by by ancient peoples and just kind of like went and got out into the wilderness and there's still a a small percentage of them left you know well i mean we've humans it seems from very early on told stories and and fantasized about human animal hybrids i mean it goes back to many different cultures uh, you know, from the Minotaur and back, you, you've had uh, all these hybrid beings that uh, have always been thought as just folklore. But who knows, man? I mean, it could be some truth to the legend. Yeah. And I mean, you know, like we've been saying, just for there to be all of these instances among so many cultures spread all across the earth. I think that there's got to be a, a a unique grain of truth that, you know, unifies all of them. Same same way we see like pyramids on like, like in Egypt, and then you go and you find similar pyramids like on the other side of the world, you know, the Aztecs or whatever. I mean, I think there were def there was definitely more of a, a worldwide community for one thing than we think of going back to ancient times. Now we've seen proof of that. We've yeah, seen we we've seen uh, items from a certain part of the world that were found in another part of the world that up until this point there was never thought to be any trade between the two or even any interaction or that the two even were aware the other existed but yet somehow something from a got to b and they don't really know how so i mean we've definitely i think you're right on that we've definitely seen examples of um of parts of the world being well being interactive that were never thought to be before. So it definitely seems like there might've been more of a worldwide awareness and uh, communication than thought. Yeah. Well, it's like what my, uh, my boy Graham Hancock says uh, for, you know, academia has always thought of the oceans as being barriers between cultures. Whereas he thinks they were more like super highways that, you know, link the world. I mean, people have been seafarers going way further back than we ever imagined. And I think that's how these, uh, shape-shifting uh, sex maniac creatures it got all over the planet. You know? Now, do you think that there's a chance of anything extraterrestrial in terms of these creatures and skinwalkers in general? I do think that our, our ancient ancestors, when it came to this genetic manipulation, I think they got the, uh, I think they got the science from beyond our Earth, whether we're talking actual physical beings from another planet, whether we're talking about intra- interdimensional beings that communicated with them and, and gave them this knowledge. I, I lean more towards the interdimensional side these days, but I think either one is a, a perhaps plausible. You see what I mean? Well, that's been an interesting um, interesting thought about extraterrestrials from some, some thinkers that um, – or some spect- – I don't know what you want to call them. I don't know that you have a scientist for things like that, a science <laughs> degree in the, the, that, that, but – you know, people have pondered if, if extraterrestrials might not be necessarily from outer space, but from other dimensions um, and have learned just how to travel between them. Uh, and I don't know, man. I mean, you know, I don't you, I don't think you ever played Half-Life, but in Half-Life, it was a, they, they, they learned to open portals to other dimensions. Mm-hmm. And they found this one dimension where it was just like, I don't know, man, like the, the life had evolved in that dimension from all of the other creatures that had come through portals. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't natural. The, a lot of the creatures weren't native to to that area or to that dimension. It's just other portals had been opened, and they. So I mean, who knows if if there are extra dimensions out there? Uh, what kind of creatures exist in those dimensions? And while in in our universe, you can't uh, you can't crossbreed like say a human and an otter. But who's not to say, who's to say what comes from another dimension and what it can and can't breed with? You know what I mean? And yeah. Well, humans that, are gross, man. Humans have been banging animals for a long time. So oh my you, God. maybe you had like a, a and I know this is far fetched, uh, but we're just throwing out different possibilities. I mean, perhaps uh, did an extra dimensional otter came through and ancient man said, "Hey, that's a cute little animal. I'm gonna bang it." And then did, and bam, out popped this creature. Now, that's, I I don't, for the people that are heading to the comment section to say, what an idiot. I mean, I don't believe that, but that's the point of these Weird Wednesday podcasts as we discuss these types of things. Yeah, man, I actually grew up hearing stuff like that. Uh, My my great-grandmother, man, and uh, by the way, her opinion does not reflect my own. I don't uh, believe this necessarily at all, but she thinks that when Cain was, uh, you know, cursed to walk the earth or whatever, that... He went into the wilderness and had sex uh, with the apes, and that's where people of color came from. And again, I do not think there's, uh, you know, she was an old mountain woman, and and people, 
like the early Christian churches in America, man, they propagated stuff like that, like the Mark of Cain and all this stuff. And it was used, unfortunately, as a way of uh, promoting racial discrimination. But yeah, she she believed down to her bones that, you know, it's just so of yeah, color came yeah. from Cain going out and having sex with monkeys. And again, let that reflect. That is not our no, opinion. No, not at all. At all. I definitely don't think that. I mean, we, we, we it's know germane that to the conversation, right? We know that skin color has way more to do with where you are on the earth and the different things like in your ancestors and things yeah. like that. But um, no, I mean, people have thought things like that for a very long time that, that humans, could have sex with animals and create these hybrid oh, yeah, creatures. Man. Stuff like that goes way back. I mean, the the Mormon Church they they still like uh, presented that into the like 1970s, I think, is when until they they kind of shot away from that. Like you, there's been interviews with uh, Mitt Romney saying that he he remembers when that transition happened in the church. So stuff like that, you know, it's it's still kind of wait. They were around. saying the racial thing. Yeah, they're like they. I think so. That wasn't like, just something your grandmother believed. Like no, I thought was, you meant like that was just something your grandmother thought herself. That was a, a wide held religious belief. Well, it was, but yeah, I mean, stuff like that like floated around the church. I I don't know like like where it was exactly preached as like official doctrine, but it, it definitely yeah, that was stuff that people like said back then and. Like I said, you look at the the early Mormon church, the the mark of Cain was a, a way to keep black people out of the church. And I, I don't think a black person could officially be a member of the, the Mormon church until like the 1970s, because it was some interview. Mitt Romney said he uh, when he heard the news on the radio, he pulled his car over to the side of the road and wept. And I was just like, he wept because he was happy. Well, that that's kind of what I wondered, you know, like a rich old white Mormon dude. I was like. Was he weeping because now we might have to like go to church with with African Americans, or because he was happy? I don't know. But uh, I'm so white not, not to get into a wonder. history thing here, but I'm so glad humanity has come further in yeah, these day dude, and age I mean, with more rational thinking. Because you know. <laughs> I don't have a church, but if I did, I can promise you, people of all color would be allowed. Oh yeah, man! When I get my cult going, dude, it's going to be a melting <laughs> pot of naked people <laughs> servicing me, all colors of genres and everything else. Can I be like your, I'm not going to be in your cult, but I, I, I still due to our friendship would like to maintain a relationship. So can I be like your cult advisor? Well, you can kind of be like the, the guy, the, the documentary filmmaker on Joe exotics. Uh, zoo. I don't like know? him, man. He's weird. He's well, freaky. I don't, I don't really like, you him. don't have to wear the hat. I don't like him. He's got, he's got nasty looking teeth. And yeah. I mean, I, not, not to disparage the guy, I, you know, I mean, but as far as uh, if I'm going to, look like any or you know i I don't want to be i don't know i don't he just kind of weirded me out man he gave me kind of weird vibes yeah and i didn't like how he turned his back on joe exotic everybody turned their back on joe exotic i know except for the uh gentleman that had his arm cut off that uh, is the the only or ripped off i should say but yeah oh but yeah so um Back to skin wall. Oh, but your cult's not going to kill people, right? It's not no, going to be no, the murderous type I mean, of cult. Your, your cult will just be like a giant sex cult, I imagine. Right, right. You're not going to violate animals, are you? No, no. It'll be anything that happens with animals will be totally consensual. So. I, I, I've got a million questions and not enough time to ask them all. Yeah. Anyway, so I don't know, man. If, if, if skinwalkers and beings like this, shape-shifting beings existed, um. Because a lot of times it's thought that skinwalkers aren't animal-human hybrids, but that they are able to shift Mm -hmm. their shape, hence, you know, shape shifter. So what do you think about that? I mean, do you think that that could just be a misconception that they're just animal-human hybrids and it's just thought by ancient people that didn't understand that they had changed form into an animal? I mean, what what are your thoughts on the whole shape-shifting thing? I I think there's instances of both. I think there's instances of animal-human hybrids that are permanently in that form. I also think there's instances where you do have uh, shape-shifting beings that are, you know, potentially not of this world or potentially have been here longer than humanity. Well, it's kind of like with dogmen and Sasquatch, you know, dogmen being separate from werewolves in the you know, sense that werewolves are humans that change forms. They are shapeshifters, whereas everything that I've read is that dogmen aren't shapeshifters, that they are a wolf-human hybrid, pretty much stuck in that form. I actually heard an interesting story, not to get way too off the subject, because we do have a whole podcast about dogmen, but I did read one story. Um, that definitely sounded like a work of fiction, but it was uh, advertised to be a true story. So 
Um, and maybe we could do a whole separate, but we, we I really enjoy going, and I want to do that more like reading actual stories because yeah. we're, we're covering subjects and yes, there are a lot of subjects out there, but you'd be surprised how hard it is to find a subject that you think is worth talking about mm-hmm. on a podcast. So, uh, it might be better just to start finding stories. And uh, I listened to the last couple of days to a couple of channels and never really found anything that stood out to me. But now that I think about it, I heard this story about a month ago and this would have made a cool podcast that this guy, like went to his grandmother's house and as far as he knew, his grandpa died when he was young and he used to go with his sister to his grandmother's house every summer. And his grandmother had like three rules, no singing after dark. Don't leave your food outside and stay out of the woods. Oh and God. that one night they left part of their bologna sandwich outside and some creatures started like attacking the house and the grandmother, blah, 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 blah. And then the one day, many years down the road, when this guy was older, he went to his grandmother's house and, and ignored the rules. And I guess now that he was a teenager or whatnot, felt he was you know stronger or whatever, but he decided to go off into the woods and he encountered this wolf-human hybrid creature with black fur that attacked him. And uh, I think it scratched him or it did, it did something to him. But... Uh, Oh, maybe not. I don't know about that part. But anyway, so then he gets back to the house and his grandmother finally tells him the story that they, for the longest time, uh, they, her and his grandfather had been getting uh, attacked and having encounters with this wolf-human hybrid. Mm-hmm. And one day, the grandfather went out to kill it and it attacked him. Yeah. And when it attacked him, it like bit him or scratched him. And this is where it kind of gets into the werewolf thing, but not completely. So it... It turned the grandpa into a wolf-man hybrid. It infected him? Like a werewolf, only he didn't change back and forth. Like, it permanently turned him. And apparently, like, in according to this story, I think that if it turns you into one, it dies. Man. So it kind of passes the curse. And that the beast that had been attacking them was their grandfather. That's why she said no singing after dark, because she used to sing all the time. And it attracted, you know... Uh, the thing that was once her husband to the house whenever she would sing. Um, Some part of his humanity remained enough to recognize and remember that singing, and it lured him, made made him come to the cabin. So no singing after dark, no leaving food out, because, of course, he needs to eat, and he'll come take an easy meal, and then don't go into the woods because that's where he stays. And it was interesting. But in that story, it was kind of a mix between dogman and werewolf because it was like you did – Turn, you did get it from being bit by one of these creatures, but it was a permanent change. It wasn't yeah. a, you know. So I don't know, man. It just it, Stories like this go back to the beginning of humanity, it seems, mm-hmm. and it just makes you wonder if it's not just wild, bored. Because you got to think, back in the day, man, people were a lot more, but we got so much stimulation now. I mean, you got your cell phone, and I'm trying to get better about it, man. I'm terrible about, like, I'll cut something on the TV, and then I'm on my phone the whole damn time. And I'm yeah. like, I'm not even absorbing. I've got two forms of entertainment going, and I'm not even really giving 100% of attention to both. Um, and people back in the day had a lot more time to sit around and ponder these things mm-hmm. or come up with these crazy stories. I mean, is there any part of you that thinks all of it's just hokum? It's just all a, a bunch of jibber-jabber just made up by bored ancient people? I mean, that that's certainly a possibility. The human imagination's a powerful thing, but in my heart and my soul, I do think there is a, a lot of truth to it. But again, without any hard evidence, it, it absolutely could just be via imagination. So who knows? I, I, I'm the, trying to be rational, that's what I think at the end of the day a lot of it is, 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 is just stories. But, you know, the thing is, is that we're constantly stories of creatures for many centuries have been written off as just that, just stories and folklore, but then animals and creatures have been found that might not be exactly that, but that are a very, like, I mean, imagine uh, like gorillas, you know, they were like uh, stories of these great apes were passed down for many, many, you know, Mm. centuries uh, up in this mountain range, I, I guess in Africa and, you know, for the longest time, people thought that, you know, and of course they were, they were the, 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 the great apes were supposedly like much bigger than gorillas actually are, but gorillas are huge compared to, you know, so, I mean, we, we really just, you know, fairly recently, I'm pretty sure discovered gorillas. Let me double check on that just to make sure that oh, I'm no, not. You're, you're totally, I think it was like 1917 or something when they. Right. Like we, we discovered gorillas, gorillas and it kind of yeah. gave some credence to these, to these stories and they weren't apes. They were giant gorillas, but yeah, you know, yeah. they discovered that, Hey, you know, while they aren't like 10 feet tall, as the stories told, they are much bigger 
So, I mean, I'm sure there's a tribe somewhere in those forests that are, you know, looking at explorers like, huh, told you so. Yeah, man. I mean, that's why I believe there's still a lot of cryptids out there that are yet to be, you know, documented. And I mean, people say, you know, oh, well, there's no way something could exist that long and not be discovered. I mean, with all the technology, but we're constantly discovering new species and and new creatures Mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, despite all of the technology we have that are still just very elusive and hidden, especially like when you talk about the Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think a lot of Sasquatch stories are bullshit, to be completely honest with you. But I don't think that. I'm not I would never say Sasquatch isn't real. You know what I'm saying? I think like UFOs, I, I, I actually do believe in extraterrestrials, but I think a lot of UFO stories are complete bullshit. It's a star or it's a plane or it's nothing. And someone just wants some attention. So they throw a story out there. Um, however, something like the Sasquatch is supposedly it's it's a creature with a lot of intelligence. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it would make sense if, if there weren't that many of them that they could stay hidden if they wanted to. Because there are some videos on YouTube that are, there's one, one of the most convincing I've seen, man, and I'm not an expert, you know, I do video editing, so I I have a few things that I can look for as to, is this CGI or is it, but there's one video and I'll have to find it and it was in a countdown. So I, you know, it it wasn't a video I saw on its own. It was thrown in with a bunch of other videos, but there was a video of of, of this guy filmed this Sasquatch looking creature and it was like tearing a tree apart. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if it was looking for food or building materials or what, but I mean, it definitely did not seem like CGI at all. The the thing on the video seemed to be in the video. Yeah. And if it was a person in the costume, this person was a hoss because they straight up were ripping this tree to pieces. I mean, like started off pulling bark and then just start straight up like breaking the tree and tearing it apart. And it was uh, it was a, it was a shakier video. And. Sometimes those can be dismissed because if I were going to make a fake video, I would definitely make it shaky because it makes imperfections in the costume of the presentation a lot less noticeable. But yeah. this, even though it's a little shaky and I mean, he's the, the cameraman seems genuinely scared. So he kind of like holds the camera away. Then he'll go to the, the, the creature for a little bit and he'll kind of go away. But I mean, it, it, it's it's convincing. So after seeing something like that, it's hard for me to say that there's not something out there that could be Sasquatch or a Sasquatch type creature. But they're elusive. So, I mean, I definitely think that a lot of a lot of crazy stories are just that they're crazy, crazy stories. Um, but that doesn't mean that um, that there is aren't weird things out there that we have yet to discover. No, nah, man. I mean, they, just a few years ago, they caught a fox on a trail cam that they thought had been extinct for like decades. So there, there's still a lot out there we don't know about. But we're going to get to the bottom of it. You and I are. Are we? Yes. But let us know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about these otter human hybrids? Aside from being extremely evil yet extremely adorable, uh, what do you think? Just a local legend? Just, uh, you know, uh, a, a superstitious way of explaining people that get lost in the woods and, and are, are ultimately killed by the elements? Or do you think there's some truth to it? What do you think about animal-human hybrids? What do you think about magic beings that can shapeshift? What do you think about the Sasquatch? We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. We love discussing this stuff. Regardless of whether we believe it or not, it's always fun just to open up your mind and discuss the possibility of, of weird things. That's why we have Weird Wednesday. So um, I might find a story because I really enjoy telling a story and then discussing it. So um, I was going to do that this week, but I really I really did. I spent a long time, a lot of days on my way to work. I mean, we work in radio, so we hear music all the time. So a lot of times in my car, I'm more of like a podcast or, um, you know, uh, uh, like a story, YouTube, like story channels. I like guess stuff I listen to. Uh, speaking of podcasts, one that I've been listening to that I've got to give a shout out to. It's called Bathroom Break. If you were a fan of Jackass or CKY um, Viva La Bam, things like that. Rab himself, Chris Rab, uh, you know, he was a big part of the Bam Margera scene back in the day, and then he kind of disappeared for a long time. Well, now he's back and he's got his own podcast. It's called Bathroom Break, and uh, he's been for the last year. He's been interviewing people like Steve O, Bam, uh, Phil, and April, uh, Brandon Novak. A lot of these people from that time that you haven't seen for a while, he's been interviewing them. And it's a, hey, Chris Pontius is one of the coolest interviews, man. Uh, it's a great podcast. So as podcasters, I always, you know, I, I definitely want to throw shout outs to any other great podcast that we stumble upon. You know, we reference the Joe Rogan podcast a lot. 
But Bathroom Break, man, check it out. If you were a fan of any of that back in the day, it is like your teenage dream come true. Uh, Rake Yawn was on there. Um, so it's really interesting. But anyways, just a shout out to that podcast because it's awesome. You should go check it out. And if anything, you know, you could put the podcasting dead sent me here. Yeah. We would love to have Chris Rabb on our show. Oh, brother. <laughs> but anyways, that's going to wrap it up for Weird Wednesday. We'll catch you uh, on the Patreon tomorrow. And we might catch you on the Patreon other days. You never know because we've been throwing out random surprise Patreon podcasts. If you're not a member of our Patreon, please check it out because where some Patreon channels you give a dollar a month and you – might get a shout out and that's it on our channel for as little as a dollar a month. You get extra podcasts. We definitely plan to start a tier system because we have some people that are donating way too much money (laughs) and we want to have a way to say thank you. But one thing that will never change is that if you are even a dollar patron, you'll always get extra podcasts every month that we can promise. So check out our Patreon podcast uh, merch. We've been talking about that for a very long time, but alas, it's finally coming to fruition. We got some special merch items we're going to be sending out to every patron is just a way to say thank you for supporting the channel but uh yeah in the meantime i guess we'll see you soon yeah i hope so i'm justin i'm jp and we're the podcasting dead